You and your friend John have been kidnapped and locked in a dark prison by a mad physicist who wants to teach you a lesson about quantum mechanics. He has separated you far away and given each of you a box with three compartments. You're told that there is a light bulb in some of the compartments, and the only way you can both escape is by correctly answering a simple question. How many light bulbs are in both boxes? If you answer correctly, you will be freed. If you answer incorrectly, you won't, ever. You are both given a phone and can communicate as much as you want. However, you are only allowed one answer, so you need to be 100% certain before providing one. Since your life depends on it and you are a good physicist, you begin studying your box and try to figure out what sort of physical laws it obeys. You open the small door of the middle compartment and find that a light bulb appears. You close it and then open it again. This time you find no light. The light bulb must have moved to one of the sides and is now in another compartment. You then try to open one of the other compartments to check and find that you can't open either of them. You quickly realize this is no ordinary box. Anytime you open one door, the other two immediately lock and are unable to be opened. As soon as you close it though, they all unlock and you are free to choose which one to open. This happens no matter which one you open, so that at any moment you can never open more than one at a time. And every time you open a door, you either see a light bulb or an empty compartment. After checking each door many times, you also realize that you are just as likely to find any compartment to be empty or to have a light bulb. This is really confusing you now, and you begin to worry. How in the world are we going to figure this out? So you decide to call your friend John to see if he understands what's happening. He says that his box is behaving in the exact same way, and he's struggling to understand why too. John then suggests opening the box at the same time and comparing results to see if there is any correlation between your results and his. You find that whenever you both open the same door, you see the same result. Either both have a light bulb or both are empty. This happens every single time. You start to think that maybe these boxes are having an influence on each other. Even though you are very far away from each other, Maybe whenever John opens his box, it somehow affects your box and causes the same result to occur. You then suggest this idea to John, even though you think it sounds crazy. He seems open to the idea, but you both remember that your genius professor Albert always told you that this type of thing was impossible. You remember how frequently he would say, the one principle we must hold sacred in physics is that no spooky action at a distance can occur. As you try to come up with a more reasonable explanation, John then has a brilliant idea. He says he has figured out a very simple way to tell if the boxes are actually having some sort of influence on each other or not. Okay, hear me out, he says. I'll also text you some photos so you can better follow my reasoning. If my box is really not influencing yours, then there is something about your box that is determining the results you get. And since you are equally likely to find the compartment empty or with a light bulb inside, anytime you open a door, there has to be some distribution of probabilities that can describe how this thing is determining the results. Whatever the distribution is, if you consider the probability of each outcome and sum over all of them, it has to equal one. Now, let's say I open the left door. Before you open a door, you know that if you open your left door, you will find the same thing. So if instead you open the middle door, we will have realized the answer for two out of the three compartments. And since there are three compartments and only two possibilities, then at least two of the compartments have to be the same, either both containing a light bulb or both empty. It's at least two, but it could be all three. If we let true mean a light bulb and false mean empty, we can then represent the probability that these two compartments are the same as follows. If they are both empty, the third one can be filled or empty. And if they are both filled, the third one again can be filled or empty. So we just need to add all those probabilities together. Now, if instead of opening your middle door, you open your right door, we could perform the same analysis. And then lastly, to make sure we cover all possibilities, 
We just need the probabilities of the same result occurring when I open the middle door and you open the right door. And if we add all of these together, we get the following. It must be greater than or equal to one, since we are counting certain events more than once. So that's it. If my box really is not influencing your box, then this inequality needs to be satisfied. If the inequality is not satisfied, then as crazy as it seems, my box is somehow influencing your box. All we need to do is carry out this experiment many times to figure out the probabilities. You both then decide to do the experiment and find the inequality is broken. It turns out Professor Albert was wrong on this one. You tell the math physicist that you have realized his horrible trick. You provide the only possible answer you can think of. Although it is logically possible that there was an answer before we opened the box, it is impossible to find an answer to your question. Every time I open a door, it affects John's box. And every time he opens one, it affects mine. So the answer depends on whether we carry out any measurements. And with that, a golden key appears, signifying you have solved the riddle and have found your freedom again.